I am David Sorensen from StopRoadControl.com. In this video I present to you truths and realities that are extremely difficult to comprehend. Information that will shock us to the core because it challenges everything we believe. It turns our world upside down and it reveals something so evil that it is almost incomprehensible. Yet it is the truth. If we want this world to become a better place, then we cannot afford to deny obvious realities. We must have the courage and the sincerity to face truth. I invite you to have this courage and sincerity when you watch this video. It will be difficult. It will be very challenging but it will also expose something extremely nefarious in this world that every human being needs to be aware of. Several former members of the Israeli Defense Force have come forth because they are extremely concerned about what is going on in Israel. They testify how the military in Israel is the most advanced high-tech army in the entire world. They also reveal how the borders between Israel and Gaza are the most heavily secured borders anywhere on earth. High-tech sensors alert the Israeli Defense Force from the moment that even a small animal approaches the borders. Yet hundreds of Hamas fighters were not only able to approach the border, but they blew up the fences. They entered Israeli territory and started destroying homes and burning down villages and killing Israeli people without any semblance of defense by the Israeli military. Turns out that shortly before this attack, the government had ordered the removal of all military presence from that area. Hamas was literally given a free pass to enter and start their operation. In the next videos, you will hear former members of the Israeli Defense Force explain that something very, very, very concerning is going on in Israel. <laughs> תקשיבו רגע, אני שירתתי כסמבצית חיר במהלך מלחמת צוק איתן, אני שירתתי באוגדת עזה, כל השירות שלי היה תומכת לחימה בזמן מלחמת צוק איתן שאז הייתה באוגדת עזה. תקשיבו לי ותקשיבו לי טוב, אין מצב בעולם שיכולה להיות כזאת התקרבות לגדר. אוקיי? Okay? מבלי שאנחנו לא נדע מזה. התצפיתניות יושבות בבונקרים ארבע שעות, הן לא יכולות לעשות ככה, הן מול מסך. לא יכול להיות מצב, שום מצב, שהיו מעירים אותי בלילה על יונה, על חסידה שהתקרבה לגדר, על, 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 על מקק שעבר מתחת לגדר, היו מקפיצים את כל הגזרה. איך נכנסו עם טרקטורים? איך נכנסו עם טרקטורים? 400 איש ואף אחד לא שם לב. אוקטובר 7th, 2023, זה אפרת פנינגזון, ואני פה כדי לשאול את האפדייט מישראל חמאס, שהתחילה את היום הזה. למרות שישראלי דפנס פורסס שהיו צריכים להיות בגלל גאזה, היו נכנסים בגלל הוויסט בנק בגלל הסיכוי הסיכוי, כדי שהגאזה האנבלופ היה נכנסת. unoccupied with military. They say around 60 to 80 percent of that area was left without the IDF forces that were supposed to be there. A year ago, there was a military operation in Gaza to prepare for such events, and ongoingly there are trainings for these kind of scenarios. This raises serious questions for me anyway about Israeli intelligence. What happened? Two years ago, there were um, there was a successful deployment of underground barriers with sensors to alert exactly on these kind of terrorist breaches. Israel has one of the most advanced and high-tech armies. How come there was zero response to the border and fence breaching? I cannot understand that. Personally, I served in the IDF 25 years ago in the intelligence forces. There's no way, in my view, that Israel did not know of what's coming. A cat moving alongside the fence is triggering all forces. So this, 
What happened to the strongest army in the world? How come border crossings were wide open? Something is very wrong here. Something is very strange. This chain of events is very unusual and not typical for the Israeli defense system. The current government is highly corrupt in my view, while the previous one was no better. I don't care about having a popular opinion. I care about exposing evil forces wherever and whomever they are. So to me, this surprise attack seems like a planned operation on all fronts. If I was a conspiracy theorist, I would say that this feels like the work of the deep state. It feels like the people of Israel and the people of Palestine have been sold once again to the higher powers that be. At the same time, this is still very, very difficult to fathom. How come the strongest army the strongest intelligence, the most sophisticated intelligence in the world, in Israel, makes it possible for few hundred Hamas fighters to enter Israel and make all of this happen, while in that area, the Hamas fighters did not meet Israeli army or any defense or any protection or anything as if the Israeli government was planning to offer the Hamas fighters this whole area on a silver plate this you know is not logical Israel has the most sophisticated intelligence has a strong army the strongest in the Middle East and allow something like this. So there is more, more behind it. Israel has sacrificed its own people, sacrificed the civilians on the borders of Gaza, took away the protection, took away the army, and allowed Hamas to do what they did. The following footage was released by Hamas. Here we can see them place explosives on the fences that are extremely heavily secured with high tech but not a sign of Israeli response. They blow up the fences on several places. Here you have an aerial view of how they are breaking through and destroying it, the infrastructure. We can even see how they are literally entering onto Israeli territory with their vehicles full of armed soldiers. And not a single attempt of the Israeli Defense Force to stop them in any way. They literally received a free pass to enter into Israel. They can even drive on the roads of Israel. This is another video released by Hamas showing how they are able to blow up the security fences and enter Israel unhindered. <laughs> to understand that this is not some massive army invading Israel, it's basically a low number of terrorists. The incredible powerful military of Israel could have stopped them in a breeze, but they didn't. So what is really going on here? Why was there no response from the Israeli Defense Force when armed soldiers from Hamas entered Israeli territory, even blowing up the fences and going deep into Israel and starting to burn down villages and kill people and kidnap people. Why was the, the Israeli military removed from that whole area right before this attack? Why was the mainstream news media instructed not to be honest to the public and why did they wait for 12 hours 
to inform Israel. There is clearly something very, very nefarious going on here, a criminal operation at government level of the worst kind. The question is, what is their agenda? What is the purpose? I believe that the answer is given by this letter that was sent by the government coalition in Israel to Prime Minister Netanyahu. It shows that they demand an immediate invasion into Gaza and a complete seizing of control of that whole area that belonged for the past decades to the Palestinian people. And indeed we see that immediately Israel responds and does something that they have been wanting to do for decades. A complete all-out attack on Gaza where two and a half million innocent Palestinian people live. Families like you and me, mommies, daddies, children, grandfathers, grandmothers, just beautiful people. They are being bombarded, they are being murdered en masse. This is homicide of the worst kind. And this invasion by Hamas is the perfect excuse to accomplish this. What every person in the world should know is that more than half of the 2.3 million people in Gaza are children younger than the age of 15. This means that Israel is now bombing more than 1 million young children. شامل وواصل في هذا المكان عشرات الصواريخ تقريبا خمسين غارة كانت فجر اليوم على هذا المكان على بيوت المواطنين أسحب أسحب شهيد اللي عاش في قلب المخيم في قلب المخيم ننقل لكم الصورة من قلب مخيم جبالة نحن الآن في الإسراف تحديدا شهداء بالعشرات وجرحى هذا هو ما يحدث الآن في غزة في مخيم جبالة تحديدا هذا سوبر ماركت رابعة سابقا The destruction that is being unleashed on two and a half million families, mummies, daddies, children, grandfathers, grandmothers, uncles, nieces. I use these words to get my point through. These are people. These are people who live there in Gaza and now Israel is wiping them out. They are destroying thousands and thousands of families under the excuse of a Hamas attack. On top of that, Israel cut off all water, power, gas and food from these two and a half million people. Here we can see utter darkness in the entire Gaza area. Hundreds of thousands of families have no drinking water, have no electricity, no gas and no food. What is really disturbing is that less than two weeks before Israel launched their attack on Gaza with the purpose of permanently eliminating it. Netanyahu showed a map during the General Assembly at the United Nations. This map is called the New Middle East. When you look at Israel, then the Palestinian regions have been completely removed. There is no sign anymore of any Palestinian presence on the map of the New Middle East that Netanyahu showed less than two weeks before they launched their attack on Gaza. With every false flag operation, it is always the same principle. Some entity wants to commit a horrendous crime but they don't want to be blamed for it. So they have to use another entity 
to shift the blame to. In this case, it is very clear. They use Hamas. Hamas is supposedly the bad actor here. And all Israel does supposedly is defend itself. So now they have the right to do something which they have wanted to do for decades. Completely eradicate the whole Gaza Strip and commit horrendous homicide on the Palestinian people. The next question we then have is, why would Hamas cooperate with Israel? In the next clip, we probably find the answer. U.S. Senator Ron Paul exclaimed in the U.S. government that Hamas is actually an organization that is set up by Israel, financed by Israel, to work for Israel. You know, Hamas, if you look at the history, you'll find out that Hamas was encouraged and really started by Israel because they wanted Hamas to counteract Yasser Arafat. What Senator Ron Paul said is confirmed by a man called Ronald Bernard. He worked at a high level in the so-called financial elites, the most wealthy and most powerful in this world who control the world theater behind the scenes. He explains how terrorist organizations are essentially funded by the same sources that also fund the organizations that supposedly fight those terrorists. Which is not surprising, considering they are involved in the flows of money. Those are your clients. You also have governments to deal with, multinationals, you have to deal with secret services, and what they now call terrorist organizations. You get all of the groups that are involved with the big money as clients. Then you start seeing the connections. So, they might be compartmentalized as you just mentioned, regarding knowledge. But because I am in the middle I see how they relate to another. You see the money coming from this place then going to that place, etc. You keep gaining information and thereby an overview of what is really going on. So do you have to serve and keep all of those groups happy, including terrorist organizations? You were trying to keep everybody happy? Yes. My God. That was my job. Keeping all the balls in the air. Yes, indeed. So one of the things that I found out, I did not know that before, but now am I do is about secret services. You think they are there to serve and protect a people, country, etc. But they actually turn out to be the criminal organizations, to be more precise. The system is heavily so. We are talking about financing wars, creating wars, so basically creating a lot of misery in this world. So, lots of conflict. And then I think to myself, if only people knew what the world is really like, secret services will stop at nothing. Nothing. But they also have their flows of money, because if they are trading in drugs or weapons or, for that matter, people, all that money has to go somewhere. Everything has to be financed. You say if, but you could confirm they are doing this? All of them? All of them? You can view the full interview with Ronald Bernard on the website stopworldcontrol.com slash Bernard. He explains much more about what's really going on in our world, behind the scenes of the puppet theater that is put up for the public. Because it is a puppet theater indeed. This surprise attack seems like a planned operation on all fronts. In Matsav, Baulam, Shihula, Liot, Kazotit, Karvut, Lagader, okay, Miblisha, Nachnoni, Damize. Israel has sacrificed its own people, sacrificed the civilians on the borders of Gaza. Since they started their invasion of the land of Palestine more than eight years ago, Several hundreds of thousands of people have been murdered by the Israeli forces. And as you can see on this map, they have gradually been stealing all their land, their farms, their vineyards, their homes, all their possessions. And then ultimately they locked up these people in Gaza, which is the largest open air prison in the world. 
with the highest suicide rate in the world because life is so unbearable there. There is something very important that we all need to realize concerning Hamas. Hamas was created so that Israel could play victim. Israel is the actual aggressor who invaded a peaceful region, murdered hundreds of thousands of people, stole all their land, their homes, their farms, their vineyards, all their possessions, and locked them up in open air prisons and in areas where these people are terrorized every day of their life. Still, a majority of humanity looks at Israel as if they are the victims. That is the success of Hamas. And this is how psychological operations work, that are run by intelligence agencies to manipulate mankind. Here you see footage from Palestinian people before the invasion by the Zionists. These are no terrorists, these are no dangerous people. These are just happy families, just like you and me. A former soldier from the Israeli Defense Force explains how they literally terrorized these millions of people on a daily basis. What's most haunts you and your conscience about what you did in your time as a soldier? For me, it's the routine way we control the Palestinians, right? A Palestinian can wake up in the morning and not know if he will be at work on time, go to sleep, not know if soldiers will invade his home. We basically control the most simple and basic elements of life. It's designed to break down the population of Palestinians and show them who's in charge and yeah, humiliate them on a daily basis. Exactly. How, how can we make 2.5 million Palestinians in the West Bank to feel that they cannot lift their head up? We will make them uh, understand that we control their lives. The segregated roads and the settlements and so forth, and so forth they exist all around the occupied territories. And military activity, home invasions, patrols, digital surveillance, they exist here and they exist all over the West Bank. The difference in Hebron is that in a very short walk, we can see examples of all of it. All of it. All of we it. saw all of it. The United Nations says that 251 Israelis lost their life compared to 5,590 Palestinians that were killed between 2008 and 2020. A member of the European Parliament from Ireland, however, says that the numbers are much higher. More than 150,000 Palestinian civilians have been killed or injured in Gaza and the West Bank since 2008. 33,000 of those were children. But what is truly behind the invasion of the land of Palestine and the stealing of the land of millions of people and murdering and torturing them? What is the deeper agenda behind all of this? We find the answer when we look at the entities who are behind the establishing of the State of Israel. It is the family of the Rothschilds. On their own official website, they brag how they are the ones who financed the rebuilding of Israel. They are the ones who made Israel possible. So who are the Rothschilds and why did they spend billions of dollars to invest in the building of a new political and military state of Israel? The Rothschilds are amongst the most wealthy people in the world. Their fortune is estimated to be several trillions of dollars, that is several thousands of billions of dollars. That makes them basically the most powerful people in the whole financial and banking system of this world. They operate, for example, from within the city of London, not to be confused with London City. London City is the city that we all know. It is London, where people live and where tourists visit. The city of London, however, is a small area of one square mile within the heart of London City. The City of London is the financial center of the entire world. 
And there is something highly significant about the city of London. This small area of one square mile is a sovereign state. It is not subject to the laws of England, nor the United Kingdom, nor the royal family. On the contrary, the city of London actually rules supreme over them. The city of London is the continuation of what we all know as the British Empire. The British Empire attempted to gain world domination. They still essentially own a vast portion of the world, like Australia, Canada, New Zealand, several African nations and many more. The city of London is the headquarters of all the big banks in this world as well as the headquarters of Freemasonry. The crest or the coat of arms of the city of London shows two dragons and then the helmet of a knight with a wing of a dragon. The Latin creed translated into English means Lord guide us. So they show dragons and they say Lord guide us. The dragon in mythology but also in spirituality uh, for example in the holy scriptures represents the personification of evil that wants to deceive and rule over all of humanity the ancient dragon is the symbol of satan or the devil it is significant that the city of london is surrounded by 14 statues of a dragon so the dragon is the number one symbol within the city of london this brings us to another element of the Rothschilds. They are known for their involvement in a religion called Luciferianism or Satanism. Baroness Philippine Rothschild often wore jewelry that depicts the symbol of Satanism, a horned goat. She even had jewels that simply showed the head of Satan. On this picture we can see Baron Jacob Rothschild posing in front of a famous painting called Satan calls his armies forth from hell. He poses alongside one of their favorite artists, Marina Abramovic. This lady organizes very strange parties for the elite. Here you see some images of these parties that are called spirit cooking. They basically celebrate the practice of human sacrifice and cannibalism. In the next video you can see a spirit cooking dinner organized by Marina Abramovic, one of the favorite artists of the Rothschilds who founded the State of Israel. I need to warn you, what you're about to see is extremely graphic and complicit and deeply disturbing. <laughs>
On December 2, 1972, Marine Hélène de Rothschild organized a surrealist ball at the Chateau de Ferrières in France, one of their castles. These are some images from their party. It again celebrates human sacrifice, which is at the heart of Satanism. Here you can see more art from Abramovich, a good friend of the Rothschilds. She celebrates all the symbolism of Satanism, the, the snake, the devil's horns, even child abuse. In 2017, the Rothschilds chose an artist from among thousands of artists in our world to decorate their sailing boat during the Lasco project. From all the existing artists in our world, they handpicked one particular man, Cleo Peterson. Here you can see some of his art. It always shows dark entities that are torturing white figures. Always darkness torturing the light, evil ruling over good. He shows scenes of violent rape, violent murder, violent slavery, and violent suppression. It is highly significant that the Rothschilds picked this artist to decorate their sailing boat. At the beginning of this video I warned you that this would be extremely disturbing information. And I'm sure that most people are not aware that Israel was founded by blatant Satanists. So, but this brings us back to the original question. Why did they invade Palestine? Why did they erect the state of Israel? Everyone who is informed knows that there has always been an agenda for world domination all throughout world history. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is one of the most basic realities of human history. There has been one world empire after the other. And for some weird reason, there are many people in our time who dismiss the reality of an agenda for world domination, which is dazzling. It's almost insane to think that there would no longer be an agenda for world domination in our time, because this has always been the red line all throughout human history. The only question is who are the people today that aim for world domination? Well, there is, for example, the World Economic Forum, who make it very clear on their own website that they are striving for global governance. They want to control the whole world. They also strive for internet governance and corporate governance. They want to establish governance over every aspect of human society. So here you have it. It is out in the open. Well, the Rothschilds are among the families who are behind the World Economic Forum, which is basically a public uh, entity that is backed up by the City of London and by these high-level financial elites. Now, the past decades there have been extremely disturbing revelations about what's going on within these uh, financial elites. The main theme that has been exposed by innumerable um, insiders and I mean surviving victims or eyewitnesses or former employees and even former directors of the FBI and the CIA and former police officers and detectives and commanders from the military and former agents and officers from intelligence services. All of these people have been revealing one same horrific reality. They have been exposing to our world how there is an organized uh, system of child abuse and child trafficking and even child torture and child ritual sacrifice that is happening within these financial elites. There is for example the whistleblower Ronald Bernard. He was operating at the highest level within these financial circles and he was moving trillions of dollars. He exposed how at the very highest level of these financial elites there is indeed this religion called Luciferianism. And he joined into their satanic masses for a while because there was a lot of fun. Sex, drugs and rock and roll, you could say. But then he was invited to partake into the ritual of child sacrifice. And he was promised that if he would join into that, he would receive unimaginable financial opportunities. He would become wealthier than his wildest dreams. 
Here is a short clip from the testimony of Ronald Bernard. But then at some point, I was invited, which is why I'm telling you all this, to participate in sacrifices. Abroad. That was the breaking point. Children. You were asked to do that? Yes. And I couldn't do that. Would you like to stop for a moment by the way? No. And then I started to slowly break down. I lived through quite a lot as a child myself and this really touched me deeply. Everything changed. But that is the world I found myself in. What Ronald Bernard has revealed to our world is confirmed by an incredible large number of other whistleblowers. I am personally in touch with several people who came out of these elites and all of them say the same thing. And this brings us back to Israel. This brings us back to what is really going on in the Middle East. All these people who came forth from these financial elites testify that their ultimate goal is to set up a one world government, global governance, and they want the headquarters to be in Jerusalem. And this has an ancient spiritual reason. I won't go into that right now, but we have to understand that everything has a background. But they specifically want Jerusalem to be their headquarters. Now, for many Christians, this will be extremely shocking to hear, and I totally understand that, but I ask you to hear me out. Everything I present here is solid evidence. It can be researched by anyone, and all the facts are available for every person who has the courage to look at these facts. So why is nobody aware of this? Why is the entire Christian community worldwide, which consists of roughly 2 billion people, why do they support the state of Israel blindly? Let us go back into history a little bit. For many centuries, Palestine was a very peaceful region where Muslims, Jews and Christians lived in harmony with one another. There was no hatred, there was no war. This is something unnatural that is created by higher powers in politics and in the financial world. But these people had no issue with one another whatsoever. It's only when the Rothschilds started investing into establishing this state that hatred was artificially incited between different people groups. So after centuries of living happily in peace and in harmony, suddenly there was this invasion by forces that are called Zionists or Zionism. Zionism is indeed the philosophy or the movement of people who want to establish uh, a new Israel as the center of a one world government. In order to accomplish their goal, they however had to do one very important thing. They needed the support of the worldwide Christian community. They needed the churches on their side. So in the 19th century, before Israel was founded. The Rothschilds worked closely with several people in Christianity. They attracted a man called Cyrus Schofield. He was a convicted criminal lawyer, an expert in fraud and forgery. He was asked to create a new Bible, the Schofield Study Bible. This was the first Bible in all of history to contain hundreds of footnotes. In these footnotes, a new doctrine was introduced into the American Evangelical Church, which says that there was to come a new political military Israel and that that would be the place where the Messiah would come to rule the world. And they said that that would be the fulfillment of the promise uh, that God had made to Abraham. And that would also be the fulfillment of the promise that Christ would return to earth. This Bible was then spread all throughout America through the Moody Bible Institute and it became the foundation for the current day evangelical theology. 
nobody was aware that this Bible was directly funded by Satanists and that it served the agenda to get Christianity on their side for establishing a new Israel that would become the headquarters of their one world government. And again, I know that all this sounds outrageous to many people who have never heard this before, but you can research this. And I encourage you to do your due diligence. I've studied this for decades and I know what I'm talking about, but it's very difficult sometimes when you talk to people who are not informed, who have simply accepted a certain mindset, who have blindly believed that and who repeat it to everybody else without ever doing their research. But all this is historical fact. The Schofield Study Bible was published by uh, the, the Oxford University Press, which was owned by the Rothschilds. And this whole theology was first written out by John Darby, whose family owned the most haunted castle in the world. Leap Castle, where 150 dead bodies were found in the cellars and where satanic masses were held. John Darby used all kinds of occult terms in his religious writings. He was involved in many secret societies and occult groups. And he is the one who educated Cyrus Schofield. But John Darby was an employee of the Rothschilds. He worked for the East Indy Company. The Schofield Study Bible literally said that everyone who supported this new Israel would be blessed by God and everyone who did not support it would be cursed by God. So fear and intimidation was used to force Christians to be on their side and they succeeded. In our time, the vast majority of Christianity believes thoroughly that this new political military state of Israel is indeed the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham but they haven't got the slightest clue what's really going on here. The whole violent invasion into the land of Palestine where Muslims and Christians and Jews had been living peacefully together for thousands of years is based on a misunderstanding of the promise that God made to Abraham in the Old Testament. God told Abraham that he would receive land, that a great people would come forth from him. But one of the experts of the Jewish religion, uh, who later became the Apostle Paul, wrote to the Jews in his time, who were called the Hebrews, that Abraham essentially was not promised and was not looking for a stretch of desert. He was looking for a heavenly land built by the hand of God, something far more beautiful, far more profound, far more glorious. This was confirmed by Jesus Christ, who was the Messiah and who came to fulfill all the promises of God to Abraham and to his descendants. But he surprised everybody by saying, my kingdom is not of this world. He said, my kingdom is not visible with the human eye. My kingdom, he said, doesn't work with weapons. It doesn't wage war. He said, my kingdom is not on a geographical location on earth. He said, my kingdom is a heavenly realm and you can only see it through the spirit of God. You can only enter it when you are born from above by the spirit. And he said, my kingdom is among you. It is inside of you. So God is not interested in a political military nation that wages war and kills people. Jesus Christ is called the Prince of Peace. He's the one who removes all hatred and violence between people and who makes people brothers. That's why in the New Testament it says, in Christ there is neither Jew nor Gentile. There is no more hostility or division. There is one new man, one new creation in Christ. Those who accept Christ, they are the ones who can enter into this kingdom of God. It has nothing to do with politics. It has nothing to do with military warfare. It has nothing to do with hatred between one people group and another people group. That is in fact the exact opposite of this. But we've all been told something entirely different. We've been told by the Rothschilds through the C.I. Schofield Study Bible, which has spread all around the world and which was unquestioningly accepted by all of Christianity, that it is all about a political military nation. 
which is the opposite of what Christ said. He said, even to the uh, Samaritan women at the well, for those who know what scriptures say, he said, the time is gone, the time is over, where people worship God in the city of Jerusalem. He said, now the true worshipers will worship God in spirit, because God is spirit, and that's the worship that he longs for. And then the apostle Paul explained to the Galatians, he said, guys, understand this you guys are not children from the earthly jerusalem you are not children from from something worldly you are children you come forth from the heavenly jerusalem the heavenly jerusalem is your mother it's a heavenly kingdom jesus christ said in the old covenant there was a physical israel a physical jerusalem a stone temple but in 70 AD that was all destroyed that was judged by the Almighty God and then in the New Testament it says that we are now the temple of the Living God he dwells in us we are his dwelling place and his spirit builds us as homes where God can dwell and through us he brings healing and deliverance to the world so we have two completely opposite mindsets in the time of Jesus the Jews wanted a political and military kingdom. That's why the apostles joined Christ. That's why Jude, who betrayed Christ, followed him. He expected Christ to restore Israel in a military political way. And when Jesus didn't do that, and when it was clear that he was going to be killed by the Jews, then Jude betrayed him. He thought, this guy is not going to restore a political military Israel. He is in no way anything that I thought he would be. He's, he's not going to be our world leader who will bring peace over all of humanity from Israel. So Jude betrayed him and that caused Christ to be murdered. The, the apostles also left Christ. They were d disillusioned. But when the Spirit of God came on Pentecost, all the Christians suddenly began to understand, starting with the apostles, what Christ had been explaining to them. This is not about a political military uh, land. This is about a heavenly land. This is about the reign of the Most High God in your heart, where you are transformed on the inside, where heaven comes to dwell in your heart and you become a completely different person not through a religion not through uh, something political or social or military or whatever but by becoming a child christ said if you become like a little child you can enter into the kingdom of heaven so the promises that god had made to abraham and his descendants were fulfilled in christ God never spoke about the stretch of desert that would be his ultimate fulfillment. He had something far more beautiful, far more glorious. He had a heavenly kingdom, a heavenly nation, people all around the world who love God. And here we come to a, an incredible misunderstanding concerning what it means to be a Jew or an Israelite or a descendant of Abraham. Who was Abraham? What is a real Jew? Listen carefully, even if you're not a Christian, even if you're not religious in any way, this is extremely interesting and fascinating and it explains the core of what's going on in Israel and the agenda for world domination. So this relates to all of us, no matter our background and beliefs. So please keep watching because a lot more will be revealed. Abraham was somebody who was faithful to the creator of life. He did not join into the demon worship and the human sacrifice and all the uh, sorcery and magic of his surroundings. He remained faithful to the creator of all life. That's why God revealed himself to Abraham and said, Abraham, you will be the father of all the people uh, throughout all of history who will be just like you. They will walk in your footsteps in a way that they will also love me despite evil surroundings in their culture. They will be faithful to me despite perversion and wickedness in their nation. He said, a great people will come forth from you and they will come from every tribe, every tongue, every nation. And this will be called Israel. Israel means Prince of God, or in other words, royal child of the creator of heaven and earth. So Israel was never meant to be a political nation. It was that for a short period to show that that doesn't work out because the people of Israel who came after Abraham, 
they left the creator they turned back to darkness and they went back to worshiping demons and human sacrifice you can read that all throughout the scriptures and god kept sending his prophets to call them back to him but they always rejected and even murdered them so god showed a political nation is not my idea this is not what i'm talking about i'm not talking about physical seed i'm talking about spiritual seed i'm talking about people who are circumcised in their heart who walk with me in the midst of darkness who are faithful to me surrounded by wickedness who walk in faith even though their eyes can't see and their mind can't understand they keep trusting me that is what it means to be the seed of abraham we are like like him we walk like him we live like him we walk in his footsteps and that's why the prophet Isaiah and the Apostle Paul clearly said that only a very small portion of ancient Israel was truly Israel only those who were truly faithful to God the vast majority of ancient Israel turned their back to God and were just as wicked and satanic as the other nations who practiced human sacrifice and demon worship and all kinds of magic and sorcery so Abraham is the father of faith. His seed is not genetic. His seed is spiritual. That's why Christ said the people who listen to the creator, who listen to God and who do what he says, they are the children of God. They are my brothers and sisters. And that's why the apostle John said, it's impossible uh, to become a child of God by ways of genetics or lineage or by the will of a man you become a child of God by accepting Christ whom he sent by believing what God says well in the time of Christ you had Jews who accepted Christ and you had Jews who rejected him the Jews who rejected Christ were the ones who wanted a military political kingdom they wanted to defeat the Romans and establish a military nation that would rule the whole world they interpreted the scriptures in a very earthly way why christ said it's only by the spirit of god that you can worship god and that you can understand it and that's why the apostle paul also said we have the mind of christ we have the mind of the spirit who reveals the mysteries of god and the mystery of god was that the promises that he had been making were fulfilled in christ and that's also why it says that all the promises of god are yes and amen in christ not in a political military nation so this is in a nutshell what the Bible really says. This is also the core, the heart of the Christian faith. God dwells in the heart of man. He doesn't dwell in a temple built by man. He dwells in the heart of man, which is built by the Spirit of God. Our life, our mind, our, our thoughts, our actions, our entire existence becomes a home for the Creator to express His love and to show His love to the rest of humanity. And there is no racism in God. He is not a respecter of persons. The mindset that being a Jew means that you have some kind of a genetic connection to Abraham, that makes you a racist because people who think that way say the Jews are better than the rest of humanity. They have the right to slaughter and murder and torture and imprison and rob everybody else because they are the chosen people. And that is exactly how the Pharisees were thinking. In scripture we can read that they talked about other nations as being dogs. They said those people are animals and now with the attack of Hamas uh, on Israel which is not really Hamas you know Hamas is um, financed by the same people who finance Israel but the Israeli defense minister literally said those Palestinians they are human animals so that is the racist mentality of these people who think that being a Jew means that you are better than other people אנחנו מטילים מצור מוחלט על העיר עזה. אין חשמל, אין מזון, אין מים, אין דלק. הכל סגור. אנחנו נלחמים בחיות אדם ואנחנו נוהגים בהתאם. There is a vast contrast between what Christ and the scriptures say and between what was introduced into Christianity. Basically, the doctrine of Zionism goes back 
to the time of the ancient Israelites, who wanted a political military Israel that would rule over the world. That's basically that literal interpretation. And they are the ones who murdered Christ. They are the ones who killed all the Christians. They are the ones who, who slaughtered the apostles because they did not want the kingdom of heaven in the heart of man. They wanted the political military fulfillment of the promises of God. So they rejected Christ. They rejected what the apostles preached. They rejected everything that the scriptures truly said. So this is where we come at the core of the issue. And I hope that you are still with me. I've been real fast explaining this as concise as I can. But I invite all the Christians who are watching this video to study the scriptures sincerely. Read the letter of Paul to the Galatians. Read what Christ in the gospel said about the kingdom. He never spoke about a political military reign. He rejected that fiercely. Okay? And Jude betrayed him for that. The Christian church has been severely subverted. Instead of being faithful to what Jesus Christ said, whom they claim to believe, follow and worship, they actually completely diverted from everything Christ has said and they went back to what the Pharisees said. We need a military political Israel. When we look at the modern day state of Israel, it becomes crystal clear that it has nothing whatsoever in common with the Israel that God is talking about in Scripture. In Scripture, God says that Israel prince of God, royal children of God, is his family, it's his people, those who love him, those who worship him, those who are faithful to him. It is his kiddos, his beloved ones, the apple of his eye, the people that truly belong to God. When you look at the current state of Israel, it is one of the most atheist states in the whole world. The vast majority of Israel fiercely rejects the existence of God. They say that there is no God. Many of them are Freemasons. Israel, in its short existence, has become the, one of the capitals of sexual perversion worldwide, with the biggest pride parade in the Middle East. It is a safe haven for pedophiles. People who are wanted by the law for child abuse can flee to Israel and they will not be prosecuted there. So this is very powerful evidence that Israel has nothing to do with the true Israel that God was talking about, which is literally the exact opposite of this. God says, love your enemies. Uh, we are all brothers. He calls people to live in peace with one another. Israel is the exact opposite of this. It kills millions of people. It murders them. It tortures children in prison. This is unfathomable. There is no connection between this political military violent state which was financed by Satanists uh, and which is a capital in the world of sexual perversion and one of the most atheist nations in the world and what God says that Israel is. It is literally the exact opposite. Let me show you something. This is a legit one dollar note. How do you know that it's real? Well, because it says so here, right? One dollar. So you can rest assured that this is a genuine one dollar note. That's exactly what's going on with Israel. It's not because somebody assumes an identity or uses a certain name that they are the real thing. This is an authentic one dollar note. It doesn't only say one dollar, but it has all the characteristics. When we look at Israel, we need to look at the characteristics, not just be fooled by the name Israel. Anyone can say I'm an Israelite, I'm a Jew or whatever. We have to look at what are the hallmarks of the true Israel according to the Torah, according to the Old Testament and the scriptures. And then we have to look if we can see those characteristics. That's how we determine if something is real. You can't just go around and say, look, this is real because it says so. Using the Star of David and using the name Israel doesn't make you Israel. This is something we really have to understand. And then another key insight I need to share with you is that this is being presented to humanity as an everlasting conflict between one people group and another. 
Israeli and Palestinians. But that's not what's really going on. As we saw, the entities who are behind both Israel and Hamas, they are the ones who have caused this conflict. They are the ones who initiate this war. Essentially, this is a war between the deep state and all of humanity. And both the Israeli and Palestinian people are victim of this. We are all being fooled by a very powerful and very cunning group of people who operate behind the scenes and who pull on the strings. So this is the mystery of Israel that has been solved. It, it has nothing to do with what the ancient scriptures say about what Israel is. It is diametrically the opposite of that. It was founded and financed by blatant Satanists who have an agenda for world domination and who want to have the support of the billions of Christians from around the world so that they can succeed in their agenda. I understand that it's extremely shocking if you hear this for the first time, but all this information can be researched. You can find more and more evidence for this when you do your due diligence. I want to invite you to become part of building a better world, where we don't support entities that create war and murder hundreds of thousands and even millions of people. We are not here to make this world a place of horror and terror and fear and destruction. We are here to bring love, justice and goodness amongst all of humanity. This is our purpose. That's why this film was made. To expose an extremely nefarious agenda. Their plan is to incite world war so that they can use that as an excuse for establishing a one world government which would then supposedly bring peace. We have the choice to fall into this trap or to open our eyes and have the courage to stand up for what is right and prevent their agenda. I invite you to go to the website stopworldcontrol.com and sign up for our emails. You will learn a lot about the official agenda for world domination and what you can do to be part of preventing this plan. The future is bright and beautiful if we rise up and if we do what it takes to make this world a place of goodness, a place of hope, a place of happiness. Mm -hmm.